The contestants might gripe about hunger, but they're secretly stashing food to take home. Just look at how well they are eating. This fish alone can last days, and the roe, with its unique yolk flavor, is the tastiest part. It's completely natural and clean. Everyone who tries it loves it. Some even eat squirrels. Life keeps improving. I wonder how they manage to do it. Let's take a look. The challenge has reached its ninth day, and two people have already quit. The camera turns to Jordan. Today, he has had a bountiful harvest, successfully catching for rabbits, each of considerable size. He won't be hungry for a while and carefully preserves the rabbit fur. Jordan is surprised to find rabbit milk inside. It tastes sweet and pretty good. He's eager to try the stewed meat and is already thinking about his next meal. The best would be to catch a whole reindeer. Otherwise, he plans to fish by the shore. Rabbits don't have much fat. To make it to the end, he needs to gather more fish. He thinks about his kids and wishes his wife could bring them here to share the experience. This place is quite suitable for a family vacation. Processing rabbits is quite simple, you just start peeling from the feet. The fur can be made into various things, provided it's kept intact. Once he has enough fur, he can craft items like hand warmers and scarves. Jordan thinks his start has been fairly smooth and wonders about his fellow contestants. Tonight, he's cooking a rabbit head feast as a reward. Without any seasoning, he hopes it still tastes good. Now, turning to Vonia, she's already improved her shelter. She spots sap oozing from a tree cut. It tastes sweet and quite good, and she thinks it could sell well as a drink. She takes a few more sips to satisfy her craving. She is very satisfied with her A-frame shelter. As long as there are no major issues, it should keep warm even in winter. However, this requires a lot of firewood. She plans to spend more time each day chopping wood. She must gather enough firewood to last three to four days. Even though she hasn't faced an arctic winter, she can already picture its harshness. She feels very anxious but keeps working to improve her situation. Vonia is always learning how to survive in the wild. She enjoys trying different foods and aims to survive on her own, just like people did in the past. Vonia's survival skills are remarkable. She can hunt and process game all on her own. I came here to test my limits and hope to showcase my energy on camera. I even did weight training before coming here. She believes she can make it through winter and possibly become the first female champion. She intends to keep improving her shelter. First, she needs to get the fire pit ready to retain heat longer. Vonia thinks things are going pretty smoothly. So far, everything's been smooth. She plans to add a door to block the wind. With a sturdy shelter, she can sleep better at night, which matters a lot to her. For now, she'll pause construction and focus on starting a fire to keep warm and get some rest it's the 10th day of the challenge let's see what nathan is up to in this great weather naturally he's still in his sleeping bag confident in his shelter he dreamt all night about outsmarting a bison in the end he managed to take it down just as he was about to eat the meat he woke up hungry if only he had slept a bit longer just thinking about it makes his mouth water he gets up to check the gill net Nathan thinks the resources here are pretty good. Sure enough, he finds a fish in the net. It looks quite big. He won't have to worry about hunger for a few days. He's definitely lost weight since he arrived. He needs these big fish to nourish himself. Today, he's lucky there's even some fish roe to eat. He carefully handles it to make sure it's intact and not damaged. Although it smells really fishy, it's highly nutritious. These alone can keep him going for days. Nathan feels fortunate to have food. It tastes like fishy egg yolk. He can barely swallow it, but he manages. He quickly cleans the fish, using the inedible parts as bait. He thinks the fish will go for it and hopes to catch more before winter. He feels confident about his chances of winning. He needs to be careful while setting things up. With the water this cold, falling in could mean trouble for the show. He heads back to camp to rest, hoping the salt in the fish row will take effect soon because he's feeling really dizzy. He's never felt this way before and fears it could impact the challenge. Quitting due to health isn't an option. Getting back to the shelter was tough. I feel awful. Later, I still have to cope with the discomfort and handle the fish. I can only rest a bit to recover. Could the fish row be the issue? I wouldn't feel dizzy just from exhaustion. I'll lie down in my sleeping bag and see if it helps. My stomach is churning and Nathan is now certain the fish row is to blame. A wave of nausea hit and I rushed outside to vomit. Had I known, I would have cooked some tree bark instead. The worst part is I threw up some blood. If it gets worse, I'm scared it might cause other illnesses. Nathan doesn't have a good solution. He can only rest and let his body protect itself. He's also considering whether to go home. He doesn't want to ruin his health for the prize money. He's had food poisoning before, but it was never this severe. He suspects the fish row is bad. Why else would he feel so awful if it doesn't improve by tonight? 
He'll call a doctor for antibiotics. Is another contestant about to leave for treatment? On day 11, Barry is thriving and even shared stories on camera. If someone grabs your neck, you can pull their hand away like this. If you're not strong enough, kick forward with all your strength. Don't focus on defeating them. Just kick and quickly run to safety for help. Barry hopes no one ever has to use this skill. Today, he plans to explore another area, hoping to hunt some animals to eat. So far, he's doing okay. His body doesn't feel any discomfort. As long as he can stockpile enough food, the prize money seems within reach. He didn't spot any animals, but stumbled upon a can, which is quite a lucky find. Whether for a pet or another use, it's very handy for Barry. He plans to make bait and set traps with it. Suddenly, he feels rich. He hurries back to the shelter to process it, starting by polishing the surface. Then he molds it into a fish-like spoon shape and adds a hook to the end. With a bit of luck, he might still catch fish with this. Barry even spirals the tail to mimic a small fish swimming. The idea seems solid, but its effectiveness is uncertain. Barry has long prepared for this challenge, willing to risk his health for the prize money. Growing up poor, the prize money is extremely important to him. He has to put everything into this challenge. He can't afford to quit over minor issues, even though he has no experience using a can as bait. But he watched some short videos and figured it seemed easy enough, so he gave it a shot. The result looks a bit rough. Still, it should work to attract fish. He's in a good mood, eager to see how many he can catch. Barry found a good spot by the shore to fish, trying to cast the hook as far as possible. He hasn't had meat in a long time. He expected it to take a while to catch something, but to his surprise, he got a bite quickly. Sadly, he couldn't reel it in. The worst part is the fish took the hook, so after all that effort, he lost it. He was in a foul mood, questioning the luck of this place, but there's no time to dwell on it now. There's still plenty to do, if not for the prize money, Barry would have dived in to catch the fish himself. He feels he's done well enough, but his luck is just a bit off. Now he's cold and hungry with nothing to do. As time passes, he misses his family more and more. Even the prize money doesn't seem worth staying. He needs to return to the shelter and calm down. He can't give up the challenge over this setback. On the twelfth day of the challenge, Brady upgraded his shelter again. Now it should surely keep out the cold. Recently, he's been dreaming of an Arctic vacation with his family and everyone finding plenty of food. He even brought back a deer. They spent a lot of time preparing and cooking it. Working most of the day to get everything ready, just as they were about to have a party, his stomach woke him up. Today, he needs to find more food, or his stomach will keep growling annoyingly. Only a few blueberries are available. He hasn't caught any fish lately. The berries don't provide much energy, and eating too many makes him sick. The key to surviving in the wild is maintaining a steady pace. You can't rush, you need to take it slow. Only by doing this can you stay in the Arctic longer. He spent some time in the military, and now he wants to see how trainees survive in the wild. With training, they can endure any harsh environment, making flexible use of whatever they find. Even common food items can be turned into ropes. I haven't yet experienced an extreme environment like the Arctic. It's really not something an average person can endure. If I win the prize money, I can teach others how to survive here. The only thing I'm worried about is my kids at home. Caring for them has made my hair fall out, and my wife was diagnosed with arthritis on our honeymoon. She typically needs a wheelchair to move around. I hope she can manage herself and the kids while I'm away, and I plan to use the prize money for her treatment. This is incredibly important for our family. Brady won't give up because of hunger, he's already prepared to endure it. Surviving in the wild is incredibly tough. With snow starting to fall, the days ahead will be even more challenging. I need to quickly see if there's anything edible nearby. Suddenly, I found animal bones, which means there are wolves in the area. Brady finds this really frustrating. The wolves must have eaten everything in the past few days, leaving no meat for him. But he can use the bones for bait since there are many useful things around. He initially just wanted to gather trees for processing. Unexpectedly, he discovered a large cow skull near the shelter, which means he'll need to stay vigilant for wolf attacks. Brady feels worse and worse. There's a lot he needs to do, and he has to stay alert to avoid being attacked. If this keeps up, he'll eventually break down. Ray's struggling too, he's only got berries to eat. He finally spotted a squirrel in a tree, but it's a bit far away, and he's starving. Maybe he can try a stealthy approach. Ray really likes that squirrel and wishes he could see it every meal. Ray watched for a while and figured traps were more dependable. He didn't want his arrows getting stuck in the tree. Scissor traps work best for small animals. He just needs to shave the branches, split them, and thread a line through. This is how it looks when done. 
Once a small animal steps on it, it will be trapped. Ray plans to make more traps and has added berries to them. He's confident he'll catch at least one squirrel. While squirrel meat isn't much, it's enough to curb his craving. He wonders what the meat tastes like. The traps are set. Do you think Ray will catch a squirrel? Check out how strong these traps are. Can any squirrel escape? It's now day 13 of the challenge. Nathan realizes his condition isn't getting better, the food poisoning is severe despite his preparations. His early survival attempts were successful, and he refuses to quit. Despite his discomfort, he keeps working, questioning the safety of the fish meat. Is the fish meat still safe to eat? Nathan considers it a minor setback. He decides to eat what he can and reassess after holding on a bit longer. Despite his extreme hunger, Brady prioritizes preparing the bait correctly before fishing, using orange fabric to lure the fish. He uses bone hooks, thinking they'll work better than store-bought ones. This time, he opts for a smaller setup to see how it performs. He left the bow and arrow behind, knowing most contestants struggle to use them effectively. He thinks it's smarter to use a different tool since hunting deer isn't his priority, he's focused on catching fish. I headed to the shore to fish, hoping the bait works. Brady is confident that catching just one fish will make a difference. He originally thought it would take a long time, but to his surprise, a fish bit the hook quickly. I quickly reeled in the fish, amazed by its size and beauty. At last, I can enjoy a good meal tonight. I hope everything keeps going this well. Meanwhile, the camera cuts to Ray, who senses a tense atmosphere. He reluctantly dances for the camera, feeling silly and hoping it won't be aired. He picks up his bow and goes to check the traps, hoping for some meat. The traps seem to have gone off successfully, but there was no prey in sight. Just as Ray was about to curse his luck, a squirrel came out to taunt him. Angry, he picked up his bow and shot it. To his surprise, the arrow hit its mark. So, the traps were just to lower their guard. The real key was his bow and arrow. In the next moment, he had a squirrel in his hand. It wasn't very big, just enough to satisfy a craving. I quickly skinned it. Honestly, I didn't really want to eat squirrel. I was just curious about what it tastes like. It smells a bit like chicken. As soon as I tasted it, the flavor was even richer. Ray realized he could definitely eat more and invited everyone to try it. It's way better than your instant noodles. Meanwhile, the camera moves to Michelle, who is setting traps. He hopes to catch some food. Once done, he heads to the shore to inspect the fishing boat, which turns out to be less useful than he thought. It feels like it's just for show, even for someone who loves fishing like him. He doesn't know how to catch fish. He's more concerned about the mental toll than the hunger. This place can easily break someone. He stays occupied to keep his mind off things. Not catching fish won't slow him down. He decides to check the traps now. After setting so many traps, he's bound to catch something, right? Suddenly, he spots something. Unexpectedly, the trap caught a grouse. He is in a great mood and plans to savor the meat tonight. It's a bit disappointing that he didn't catch any fish, or he would be even better off. Michelle considers setting more traps. He believes he will catch more grouse later. Should he steam it or braise it? Let's see what Ray is up to after eating the squirrel. For some reason, he feels even worse. Now he just wants to cry in front of the camera, feeling that the squirrel shouldn't have died. Oh, man. You were happily smiling while eating it, but Ray doesn't care. Even if he cries, who knows how long he'll be sad before calming down. He looks like he's ready to go home. As night falls, Michelle is happily eating the grouse. If he could get one every day, he thinks he could win the prize. Everything was going well. Until a spark suddenly landed on his shelter. The smoke is getting thicker, and Michelle realizes there's a big problem. No one expected the shelter to catch fire. Can he put it out? Let's wait and see. 